Yeah, the amplitude is different. We have some some with related to A, and we have one plus plus that omega divided by A square and then square root. So the amplitude, the real input A and the amplitude of omega, it depends on omega, and also depends on your A, small a, and large a. Okay. So, that's your amplitude. This is your first angle. That's the definitions. We always call this a state state amplitude. This is state to state first angles. You have to be aware of the definition of the state of state solutions. Some, some terms, some terminologies. That's, that's in, we, we have to be aware of this. And that phi, this phi, if look at the uh, formulations, phi sine phi equal to omega uh, divided by square root of a square plus omega square, and that phi is frequency dependent. And also uh, the, the, the amplitude dependent. The, uh, the, uh, the A is that uh, transcend uh, A is also minus AT, so that's also A, A dependent. So face, the frequency different, the face will be different. So you have to look at those uh, formulation to understand uh, why that that the, uh, we have the amplitude and phase, those are the, your input frequencies dependent. Right. Those are the, the those just uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, solutions from the input for the, for the single degree frames. And let us look at this. And not a transient solution, I call transient solutions. So if A is equal to 1, the transient solution will decay that way. If A is equal to 2, if this is minus, and the transient will decay quickly. So the transient solution will depend on your system uh, A. They don't depend on any input. This is nothing to do with input. Chosen solution is nothing to do with input. Alright? So in real system the same thing, earthquake may not come, but because in this building, if you have an initial condition for the building, then the building still will be shaking. Doesn't matter if you have input or not. Assume A larger than zero. Okay, now, this is showing you the, uh, the face uh, today. The blue line is the original harmonic excitations. The green line is your steady state solution. You can see that when it will come in, uh, your system will feel as quick as the input uh, come in. So it will be uh, your, your, your harmonic and your stable state solution will have the phase C different. But however, now be careful that I did not add the amplitude in. I just showed you the cosine omega t and cosine omega t minus C. I didn't have an amplitude in before the cosine omega t. Mm. The amplitude. One with, the, one with the same thing too. But here I just show you the face. I just want you to understand the face. So this is the face, and if you look at carefully, that is a face phi. That means you look at from the blue line and the green line, those are the peak and not the face angle. And that's frequency dependent. Okay.
Uh, there's a translator of the Bible on the line there, right? Um, that just gives you some idea about the importance of Fuller's angle. Right? Let's look at an example here. If I have A equal to 4.5766, um, uh, or big I equal to 10 radian per second, and small A, that's the uh, 4.5766. Uh, my input is 8.248 cosine 10t. That's my, because my omega frequency is 10 million per second, that's my input. Then you will be able to see that my transient is this. It's 0.6 exponential minus 4.5766t, and that means if the initial is 0.6, we're coming down, the transient coming down quickly. My steady state will be on the, uh, uh, the wall side of my right-hand figures here, and we can see there's a uh, 0.75 cosine, uh, and we got 10p minus 2, that's my phase angle, is minus 2 radian. So, that's my rate of steady state, plus my transient will be my total response. So, the only difference is, is if you look at carefully, is the beginning, uh, uh, beginning here, you add those two together, and uh, your beginning is from almost zero, and you can go up, and then come down quickly, because your chance is gone by about one second, so about one second you have no chance in all, only your steady state response left. Look at carefully this, because the key is zero point six. It's potential minus 4.5766 plus 0.75 percent length of steam P minus 2.6. So that is the, the solution for the, that's the response functions. It, it, it has two parts. One is transient, one is steady state. If I don't have a transient, it means I don't have this 0.6 I don't, if I don't have initial permission, I don't, I don't have this 0.6 exponential minus 3.5776. That means I don't have transient. If I don't have initial permission, then transient solutions are gone. But I have a state of state. So this figure shows you how the transient and steady state response, uh, how they affect the the total response of the system. Okay, that's the example. I keep saying that the sparkle we have two parts. We have homogeneous, we have uh, particular solutions. Physically, we have transient response, we have steady state response. That's physical meaning. Mm. So, when you look at the controller design, you better keep in mind that you have to be able to explain the physical meaning of each term. You have to really explain to your boss or your advisor so what is the physical meaning of each term. It's easier. Because uh, mathematic, uh, mathematics is just a little tool to solve the problem. Physics is the one to solve the problem. In mathematics, you can have all kinds of different ways to solve it. And I'm going to show you another way to solve it. But now, get us look at this. <coughs> right, this I call frequency response function here. What do you mean frequency response functions? All right. Now, this is my amplitude. G omega is equal to W omega divided by AA. Now again, 
in use from, from slides maybe uh, uh, two or three slides earlier, I don't use any complex number. There's no complex number involved here. Again, complex number does your proof. And you don't have to use that if you don't need it. And, and this example is showing that I did not use any complex number here. And this will give me whatever I got. So, G omega defined to be your W omega divided by A. A is your additive of the input functions. See, A, small A, and not A, that's just nothing but your amplitude of your input functions. Your harmonic, so, uh, harmonic extension amplitude is A. So, we study 